With any popular book series must seemingly come a movie adaption that entirely misses the point of why people like the book in the first place. But that thankfully didn't seem to be the case for the Diary of a Wimpy Kid franchise, a story about Greg Heffley and his struggles through school and family life presented in the style of a teenager's journal. And let me tell you, I was an avid reader of the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series. Check out my sweet collection. What do I do with all these? The Diary of a Wimpy Kid series contains three movies with a fourth one that everyone tries to forget about. But today we're only going to be looking at the first two because this video was already going to be long enough. But before we get into it, I wanted to give anyone unfamiliar a brief history of the Heffley family. First we have Greg Heffley, and for those lucky enough not to be familiar with Greg's character, this guy is about as full of himself as any kid his age actually. And his aspirations to become rich and famous so he doesn't have to deal with the peasants beneath him is the reason he keeps a diary. This is a journal. Not a diary. Oh, sorry, a journal, my bad. I also really like that they tried to replicate that weird little tuft of hair he's got in the books, that's kinda nice. In Greg's family, we have his little brother Manny, who is actually a demon from hell. <laughs> his father, Frank, who is totally just done with his family and life. His mother, Susan, who is way too accurate as to what moms are actually like. And of course, his older brother, Roderick, who is as caring and supportive as any older brother should be. Yeah! Except Roderick is the best character in these movies. In any movie ever, in fact. Never do something when someone else can do it for you. <laughs> I mean, the film even begins with us gazing directly into Roderick's eyes because they know exactly what we all want. Greg is already late to his first day of middle school and so we're all cursed with the sight of a rather concerning amount of half-naked Greg as he scrambles to get ready. But it's revealed that Greg was in fact the victim of an epic prank from Roderick because it's actually 4am and now he's woken his entire family. It was Roderick! He woke me up! He was just- Go to bed. What a fucking legend. The intro is done in the style of the book's illustrations, which is pretty damn cool. It is very strange to see them move though. What I really like about this movie is that it accurately depicts school as an absolute hellhole. We then get to meet Rowley, Greg's way too pure best friend. Donde esta la biblioteca? Oh, and there's also... Freggly. Wanna see my secret freckle? <laughs> this kid keeps me up at night. I guess this is where the cool guys hang out. Afterward in PE class, both Greg and we as the audience are introduced to the infamous cheese touch. Stop! Good God, man! You almost got the cheese touch! I want to thank this movie for single-handedly ruining an entire year of middle school with this godforsaken cheese touch bullshit. Later back at home, Greg attempts to find Roderick's yearbook back when he was in middle school. I didn't know Roderick was into motorcycles. What did I tell you would happen if you ever went in my room again? I'm going to kill you. Literally. Kill you! I aspire to be as good of a brother as Roderick. No timeouts, only death. Trapped in his room with an urgent need to pee, Greg chances an escape only to find out that Roderick left ages ago. Uh... Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Nothing is more important in life than family. American Family Insurance. Back at school, the two search for a club to join and eventually settle on wrestling, where Greg gets his ass handed to him by Fregley. The news of Greg's humiliating defeat spread quickly and becomes the topic of discussion at the dinner table. Uh, I heard he got his butt kicked at wrestling. And what is wrong with you? Why would you sign up for something you don't have to do? Roderick, please marry me. Thinking what he needs is a new best friend, but knowing he can't just dump Rowley, Greg instead plans to fix him by essentially molding him into another Greg Heffley. And believe me, the world does not need more Greg Heffleys. Yeah, hey Bryce. Cute butt. You go, Rowley. You're doing amazing, dude. My mom doesn't let me play with makeup anymore. Shut up, tool. It's Halloween night and Greg and Rowley are trick-or-treating, only to immediately be harassed by some random teenagers. Hey, Reflector Dude! Nice costume! Thanks! My mom made a- <laughs> Why is everyone in this town such an asshole? Not satisfied with shattering their self-confidence and threatening their safety, they continue terrorizing these two young children until Greg can find shelter in his grandma's house. Ooh, ooh, ooh. After one botched attempt to scare them away, which somehow made the situation even worse, the two run for their lives as these friggin' psychopaths give chase. The only reason they lose them is because they head straight into the very spooky woods, which hide an even more sinister evil. Ah! Next up on things for Greg to fuck up is a position within the school safety patrol. Oh, is that Coco? Sorry, safety patrol only. Sorry. This kid's entire year is ruined. Rowley's pretty lucky to have me as a friend. <laughs> oh! Yeah, you got that right. And just like that, Rowley is super popular at school because apparently seeing a broken hand is the highlight of these people's day. Hey, I I'm the one who broke his hand. Then you're a jerk. Yeah, get fucked, Greg! With Rowley getting all the attention, Greg is finding himself feeling lonely. 
Run! His new attempt to make a name for himself is applying to fill in the vacant spot for the school's cartoonist. He asks Rally for help, and it's here that he comes up with the greatest catchphrase to ever grace the big screen. Zooey mama. It's the same joke every time. How the fuck do you not get the joke, Greg? He says zooey Zoo mama. That shit is hilarious. We can't just do the same thing over and over. We can't if it's Zooey Mama. The kid makes a good point, man. I wonder what is in this cute little box. It's not a box, it's a brick, you dumb moron. Oops, I've been trying to open it all day. Can you say Zooey Mama? After being told to piss off, Rowley ends up submitting his own cartoon himself, which, to no one's surprise, turns out to be a smash hit. And the winner is... Zooey Mama by Rowley Jefferson. I couldn't believe it. Am I the only one who gets comedy? But just as everything is looking up for him, Rowley gets in trouble for something that Greg did when he shoved a bunch of kindergartners into a hole while on safety duty. Wow, what a perfect opportunity for character growth. Maybe Greg could finally do the first good thing in his entire life if he just- I decided to let Rowley take one for the team. <sighs> he does tell Rowley about the fact that he was the one that did it though, so I guess there's that. You know what, Greg? You're not a good friend. Yeah, get him! Don't call me. Don't come by my house. With no more rally to keep him company, Greg has to turn to the only other person who can tolerate him. Hey, Greg Heffley. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Next up on the to-do list, drama. What a lovely soprano voice you have. So they make him a tree. Bobby! God damn you, Manny, you wicked bastard! And with his elaborate middle school popularity plan in ruins, Greg has finally lost it. Somebody needs to pay! And who better to inflict immense suffering than evil incarnate? Where did you get that? Enraged that her harmless three-year-old boy would be reading such sinful material, Susan chews out Roderick in front of his band. But I can't even believe she'd even considered the idea that it was Roderick's fault, considering he's never done anything wrong in his entire life. Do you have anything you want to say to women for having owned this offensive magazine? I'm sorry, women. With Greg and Rowley's conflict finally reaching its peak, there's only one way to settle things. Either a dance battle or a fist fight, I have no idea, really. But then the kids from the truck on Halloween suddenly appear on school property without any form of security to stop them, that's good to know. Oh, you're so freaking dead. This movie has more death threats in it than a YouTube comment section. The cheese finally gets a payoff as a plot device as the bullies force Rowley to... Oh god, no. Now eat it. No! <laughs> Before the school cohort can savagely turn on Rally, Greg steps up to actually do something selfless for a change. Oh my god. Rowley Jefferson ate. I ate the cheese. Which I'm going to assume was just a failed attempt to take credit for it because there's no way this monster would ever do something for another person. I'm sure his display of bravery and valor might get the other kids to realize that- Cheese touch! Greg Hefley has the cheese touch! <laughs> God, I hate kids. And now they're friends again, and I never want to look at another piece of cheese for the rest of my life. So, the year turned out pretty good. Zooey mama! It never gets old. The first Diary of a Wimpy Kid honestly wasn't as good as I remember. The film has a bit of a weird structure, and it kind of just ends without it feeling like there was a proper build-up. I gotta say, I was a little bit let down by it. Now, as for Roderick Rose... <sighs> this is a Greg thing. I don't see why I had to come. Hey, guys! One for pizza? Oh no, he's back! This movie introduces Holly Hills, the love interest from the books, and Greg, still being Greg, immediately becomes obsessed and already envisions a future with her. The first step toward achieving this, though, actually involves talking to her. This should be good. Wow, my name is... We know exactly who you are. Holly Hills of 432 North Embry Lane. Stop! We don't know who you are. We have no idea who you are. Stop! Stop! Holly, now is your chance to get out of there and never look back. How did Roderick come from this family? Frank and Susan decide that because Greg and Roderick have been fighting too much as of late, the two need to spend more time with each other. To achieve this, she's invented a fake currency called Mum Bucks to give them as a reward for hanging out together. Which does seem like a thing that a mum would do, to be fair. Create relationships, relationships to receive monetary compensation. The news broadcasts the announcement of a town talent contest, which Roderick is very excited about. Hey, Greg, maybe we can a chunky cheese. Manny, what have you done? I'm only free. 
Shut the fuck up, Maddie. You know what you did. When Greg returns to school, he finds out that, oh, wow, look, Holly's in his class. Isn't that convenient? Roderick comes to pick him up in his van after class, which you think would at least raise some suspicion. But as the last movie established, you can just enter the school with no problem. So get in now. <laughs> When they somehow manage to make it home without dying, Manny gives to Greg what Susan claims is an apology gift, and she won't even let him throw it away. You can see the smug grin on that scoundrel's face knowing that another one of his devious plans succeeded. Chongus, 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 chongus. <laughs> Feeling inspired by the pain of an elderly woman, Greg and Rowley hatch a plan to make themselves internet celebrities by creating a similar video, and in the process inadvertently predicting TikTok. None of their ideas seem to be getting anywhere until the final stage of Manny's master plan is revealed. That didn't feel good at- the next day on their way to church, Greg sits on something Manny was eating and <laughs> it looks like he's done a poopy. Oh, and to add insult to injury, Holly's also there because of course she is. Roderick, no, don't do it. Poop! He's pooped his pants! As you can see, the church is a holy place of tranquility and respect. Ah. Fed up with their behavior, Susan leaves the brothers at home by themselves to sort out their differences as they head out on a holiday. Oh. I don't have anybody over this weekend. Got it? Frank, no, you fool! <laughs> The morning after, Manny ruins everything yet again by apparently being sick and causing their parents to head home early. Within an hour. Holy! The pair do a surprisingly good job cleaning up, with the only mistake being that they had to entirely replace the bathroom door. But come on, they won't notice that. Hey! What the- Look, don't- These- These are off limits! No touch! The two both agree not to tell their parents the truth, with the only weak link being Rowley. Hey Rowley! What's new, huh? It's just- See how many views our videos got. It's gotta be thousands, maybe millions. Four? We only got four lousy hits? Yeah, I feel that, bro. Guess who wanted to join the big boy sleepover? Baby Rowley. You son of a bitch. Surprisingly, it didn't take Susan very long to realize that the door to the toilet is missing a lock. And while Roderick is able to lie through his teeth, Greg isn't quite so calm about it. Two words, bathroom. Door. It was Roderick! He made me use his idea! He had the party! Someone were on the door, so we had to change it! God damn it, Greg! But he's able to convince her not to get mad at Roderick by highlighting the fact that the two of them have been getting along better lately. You may not be half as lame as I thought you were. This is my favorite scene in the movie, by the way. Somebody farted. farted, farted, farted. Somebody farted. farted, farted. Five stars just for that. Roderick then takes Greg out for a night after a series of failures to try to impress Holly. And I gotta say, it's surprisingly wholesome seeing the two of them getting along so well. Can't wait to see how this goes wrong. So what did you boys do? Just hung out at the mall and talked about life. Uh-oh. Can you explain what you're doing in this photo? That's not me. Genius. And now with the secrets all out in the open, everyone is back at each other's throats. No, you're my brother. She'll never be my friend. Ooh, shit! <laughs> their parents then dish out their punishments, the most severe of which is forbidding Roderick from competing in the talent show. And then they dump them at their grandpa's retirement home. <laughs> Oh, and Holly's also there too. This girl's Holly? a freaking stalker. And amazingly, they manage to bond over their intense hatred of their siblings. But as if Roderick is ever going to let something in Greg's life go right for once. It was destiny that Holly was here too. My luck had finally changed. Aww. <laughs> While he's asleep, he steals his diary and Greg opts to give chase without even bothering to put some pants on. And dear God, I don't want to look at it. <laughs> And in his panicked frenzy to get away, he somehow ends up in the women's bathroom. I swear I've had a nightmare like this once. When they make it back home, their parents end up forcing them to go to the talent show anyway, even though they can't participate. Man, that's just cruel. Greg decides to make yet another incredible self-sacrifice, because apparently he only gets one of those every movie, and proves once again he's a master negotiator as he convinces his mom to let Roderick play in the talent show, on the condition that he volunteers to be the magic assistant for Rowley, since his original partner has stage fright. Which, okay, is kind of really cute. Yeah. How bad can it be? <laughs> oh, no. It starts off very rough, but they manage to make it work by turning it into an unintentional comedy. Be free, little friend. <laughs> and now it's time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Welcome to the stage, loaded diaper, oh yeah. And as it turns out, the crowd loves them. Just not for the reason they think. Dad, yeah. are we gonna tell them that the audience went crazy for mom's weird dancing? He's happy, she's happy. 
I say we keep this one between the two of us, okay? Frank, you are so wise. And yeah, that's about it for Roderick Rules. The only problem with this movie is that there wasn't enough huh? Zooey Mama. Where some book to film adaptions have failed, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid series succeeds at bringing both the humor and the characters to the big screen, as well as being entertaining films in their own right. And that's mostly because of Roderick, baby. Seriously, Devin, I'm, I'm free later tonight if you are. I, I just want to hang out. If you guys want me to cover the third and fourth movies, by all means, please let me know, but I think this is plenty for now. Thank you all so much for watching, and a special shout out to this month's top Diamond Vault patrons. Ender Pigman 9, Gulag, Sergio, Pineapple Monster, Primal, and Zion Trail. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Zooey Mama. <laughs>